Welcome back to Electric Petrolhead. My name is Andy. I've got about 35,000 ish miles under my belt, fully electric, massive fan, and I'm here to just share my experiences and help you out in an unbiased way. So, what I've put together here is the five things I think you should do after you get your electric car. So number one is just to get a few charges under your belt. Now I'm assuming if you've watched my other video on what to do before you get your electric car, you sorted out the local charging options. But just get a little bit of experience because you might find there's a better solution there that you haven't really thought about. Now if I head into Milton Keynes, I could go to a supermarket and have a rapid charge. I could go to a little co-op, which is like a little small grocery shop, and get a rapid charge. I could go to various parks and get a rapid charge. Or I could go into the city centre and either get a rapid charge or leave it on a slow charge if I'm going to the th my theatre. Well, yeah, once the pandemic sorted. Going out for a meal or going shopping for the day. So there's so many different options. So what I would do is I would just understand all the local chargers if you need them. And if you don't need them, start thinking about the places you go to often, because it might be that you can charge at a place you hadn't really thought about and it becomes just part of your life. Now the ultimate scenario for electric car owners is that wherever your car is not moving, parked up, you can charge. Whether that's on your driveway or when you go shopping or when you go out for dinner or when you go to a hotel. All those options should have charging and they should either be the sort of slow charge that takes say eight to 12 hours overnight at a hotel, all day shopping trip, you know, going out for dinner, get, you know, a, you know, a third of a tank added whilst you're at dinner, for example, or rapid chargers that you just do them quickly with options, you know, for a quick bite to eat, stretch your legs, walk the dog, that sort of thing. So, just understand charging so you can see if there's a better option than what you're currently doing. But for most people, charging at home is gonna be the most common thing. Reason number two, and I talk about them a lot because they are brilliant, is if you haven't already and you charge at home, and even if you can't charge at home, but you use electricity at home, is move over to Octopus Energy. They are a fantastic company. I've done other videos on them, but if you go into the description, you can get a 50 pound credit by clicking my link and signing up and who doesn't love free money? Third thing I suggest you do if you've just bought your first EV is to download an app called Zap Map. It's very straightforward. It is literally a map of the UK. And if you're visiting the UK from abroad, it's a great app to get as well. But yeah, it lists all the options. Now, when you first go on the app, you're gonna be seeing a flood of different chargers. It literally covers the screen in charging icons. And that can give you either a lot of confidence or confuse you but don't let it confuse you. Go into the settings and you can turn off charges that are not applicable to you. If you've got a CCS charging car like my BMW i3, then you wanna go in and turn off Chadamo, you wanna go and turn off Type 2, you wanna go and turn off 3-pin, you wanna go and turn off, you know, potentially even the mega rapid ones, like the 350 kilowatt, because my car can't take it, so it's not really any point seeing those. But yeah, just leave it, on the type of charging that you want. Once you've done that, you can then learn about the different brands. I'm a big fan of Instavolt. They are very straightforward to use. Just tap your credit card, plug the car in and charges up. It's really good system. So yeah, start to learn about what charges you like. If you click subscribe and go and look at my video list, you'll find one which is the 10 different sort of prices of charging in the UK. And that talks about lots of different brands in there as well. Just get an idea, but that map really good starting point. Thing four you should be doing, and if you've watched my five things to do before you get a, a EV, you've hopefully planned this, but is go on a road trip. I know that if you're watching this when it's just gone out, the pandemic is still here, it sucks, and we can't do road trips, and we should just be staying home and staying safe. But once that's over and done with, plan some road trips, you know. Go to the seaside if you live in the centre of England like I do. You know, go up north, go down south, go down to Cornwall. All these different parts of the world are now well catered for for electric car owners. Do some planning, understand where the charges are going to be, and you're going to have a great time. If you've got a Tesla, then just chuck it in the sad nav and go via the Tesla chargers. But even if you do have Tesla, or you don't, just like I said in the previous one, download ZapMap, 
start to get a feel for where some good charges are. Um, what I tend to do when I'm going on a longer road trip is I'll have a rough idea where I'm going to charge and then I just jot down in my phone a bunch of um, postcodes for where these charges are and chuck that into my sad nerve as I'm going along. Makes it easy and I just tend to do charger hopping. Yeah, a little bit of planning on ZapMap will be good. If you're really stressing about it, just drop me an email. My email address, as always, is in the description. Tell me where you live, tell me where you want to go. I'll have a quick look on ZapMap, come up with some ideas and um, show you the way. Be easy. So yeah, go do that road trip and enjoy it, stress-free. Now the fifth thing I would love you to do, and it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, but we get enough stick from petrol owners and stuff like that, is on your commute or when it's busy, enjoy it when you drive past a petrol station and there's a queue out onto the road, because that happens quite a lot, especially at rush hour. And if you've charged up overnight and you've preconditioned your car so there's no ice on your car if it's winter, or in the summer you've cooled the car down to a lovely temperature before you go, you get in your electric car, full tank of fuel, you just drive straight past those petrol stations. You don't have to get out if it's cold, you don't have to get out if it's windy, you don't have to get out if, it, if you're late to get to work or to a meeting. It's just straightforward and it's fantastic. A little bit of a smug moment, but you've got to have a bit of fun in life, haven't you? So I hope you've enjoyed this five things I think you should do after you get your electric car. If you've got any other suggestions, either as an electric car owner or you have questions, just put in the comments. It's always interesting to read. And hopefully if you need help, I can help you. If you don't need help, great. Just enjoy your cars and see you again on another video. If you've enjoyed this, hitting like and subscribing really helps my channel and helps me get in front of more people that need my help. So thank you for watching. See you on another video again soon. Bye.